Welcome to our summer math program tutorial, and thank you for joining us today. This session is for you, for parents, older siblings, or whoever wants their children to strengthen math concepts from home. Today, we will equip you with everything you need to help your child continue learning math during summer months. First, let's look at why summer learning is so important. Then, we'll focus on how you can use 10 marks as a tool to help your child grow in math. Keeping a growth mindset will be essential as your child perseveres to learn new ideas, so we will spend time learning more about what a growth mindset is and how you can foster one in your child. You will then have an opportunity to put together and apply these ideas, and we will review with you key takeaways. Please keep in mind these learning objectives as we share information. We will come back to these key questions at the end of our session and make sure you are equipped for the summer ahead with answers to the following. What is 10 marks and how can I use it with my child this summer? How can I encourage my child to do his or her best? So let's begin. Why is practicing math so important during the summer? First of all, summer learning loss affects all children unless they participate in educational activities. Secondly, Research shows that students lose the equivalent of two months of knowledge in that time period. So on average, teachers spend almost 20% or a fifth of a school year reteaching what students forgot over vacation. It's also important to recognize that continuing students' access to education over summer is critical to diminishing the achievement gap between lower and higher income students. Additionally, we know that during the academic year, schools fill children's calendars with productive activities, but during summer, families are left to fill the gap on their own, and this is a challenge for most. Last but not least, it's important for children to continue learning over summer because we know they feel most confident and proud when they are learning and they feel rewarded when their work pays off. Like you, we want to support children to approach learning with confidence, and this summer program is a great opportunity for them to practice, strengthen skills, and ultimately become better learners. So where do we start? What can we do? Let's learn more about what 10 marks is and how you can use this tool with your child. Here is the summer plan. First, your school or district will issue an assessment to your child through 10 marks. Students can think of that test like a visit to the doctor's office. We're just checking to see strengths and weaknesses in math so we can put together an exercise schedule specifically for your son or daughter. Once your child submits the assessment, the test results will produce a list of personalized assignments that cover math topics prescribed for your child. And in some cases, they will help him understand remedial or enriching math concepts. Then, it will be important to keep up the work over summer, and tracking progress will help you and your child stay motivated. We'll take a look at the data you'll see and how you can track goals in just a moment. Finally, at the end of summer, your school or district may again issue an assessment. If they do, you and your child will be able to see gains made over summer. Now, let's take a closer look at the practice your child will do. How can she benefit from working online? Our goal is to give students practice to help them retain all that information they received from teacher's instruction all year long. When students practice, they often need help. In one scenario, students might look for support, but they don't have a textbook nearby, or they're not sure what to research online. Maybe older siblings and parents are not nearby to give help. Another scenario could be that your child is working on a math problem, but never actually received instruction on that topic. Your child simply never learned the skills needed to be successful on that problem. A third possibility could be that your child is working on a problem, finds a solution that is actually incorrect, and moves on. With a lack of feedback, your child might repeat mistakes over and over again and never actually know he is making mistakes. The end result is some students come back to school with major gaps in learning, even though they did do math work. To prevent this learning loss, we're giving online math practice to your child through his or her 10 marks account. With online assignments, students have help whenever they need it. 
For every question, there are hints and videos to help your child recall and learn information and answer problems correctly. If your child makes a mistake, it's okay. He or she can read the explanation immediately and see how to answer the math problem correctly next time. And if your child finishes an assignment with a 70% or less, it's also okay. He or she will automatically receive a mini lesson that will guide them through information again. Once your child is finished with the mini lesson, called an amplifier, your child will have a do-over or a second chance to apply new knowledge to the math problems and try again. On average, the increase in score between a first try and a do-over assignment is 14%. Let's take a look at a student account to get a better understanding of how this will work. Before your child logs in, you can register a family account by using the parent code given to you by your child's teacher. Access this parent account to look up your son's or daughter's username and password. You can also use your parent account to view your child's scores and assignments. To help your child, you can be with her as she logs into her account and begins to practice. You will see that for every problem your child is working on, she can use several tools if she gets stuck. This is the perfect time to use these tools because research shows that when students have questions and are curious, their brains are primed to learn and absorb information. So if your child needs help with a problem, she can first use hints. There are three hints for every problem. If she still has questions, she can watch a video. There is at least one video for every math problem. Then, if your child answers a question incorrectly, it's okay. There is a learning opportunity here. An explanation will appear, and he will have the opportunity to see the correct answer and how to get there. Encourage your child to spend time using hints, videos, and reviewing explanations to strengthen his math skills and improve. You can help by spending time reviewing math with your son or your daughter by sitting with them using hints, videos, and reading explanations, and answering a few questions together. You can even make goals to use a certain number of hints and videos. That way, you will encourage your daughter or son to learn without putting pressure on him or her to finish an assignment with a specific score. For example, parents or older siblings at home can set a timer for 30 minutes, and if the child works diligently for the entire time, you can celebrate that hard work together. Over time, celebrating growth and encouraging perseverance will result in an increase in scores, but we see children learn most when their primary focus is on growth. What if your child needs support with reading? Show her she can use the text-to-speech icon to hear words read to her while she is also reading to herself. Also, there is closed captioning in the videos, so your child can choose to watch words appear on the screen in English or in Spanish. Once your child submits the assignment, he will see his score. If he scores less than 70%, don't worry. Try not to feel discouraged. There is room for growth, and the good news is that there is a targeted mini lesson called an amplifier that will immediately appear for him. He can begin the amplifier right away while his brain is primed for learning and begin to review material. Once your child is finished with the amplifier, she can then begin the do-over and apply everything she has picked up from hints, videos, and amplifiers. On average, scores increase 14% on the second try, so your child may soon be celebrating her growth. Let's review key ways you can support your child as he or she practices math and 10 marks. First, create a parent account with the registration code provided to you by your child's teacher. You can always log into your parent account to look up your son's or daughter's username and password. Also, you can help your child get into the habit of using built-in support when she is stuck on a problem. Remind them to use hints and videos and to study explanations when she answers a question incorrectly. And if your child earns a 70% or less, you can remind her to carefully go through amplifiers and try to learn as much as she can. You can even sit with your child while she goes through this virtual lesson. 
remember that if your child needs support with reading, he can always use the text-to-speech icon and show subtitles and videos for language support. Another great tip is to keep your child motivated with goals you can make together. For example, how many assignments should we complete this week? Or how much time are we trying to spend on 10 marks? These are examples of goals that celebrate effort. Last but not least, children can also be motivated by celebrating growth. You can look at scores every week or every two weeks and write them down in a journal. You will see over time how your child is improving and you can be excited and celebrate together. Now we've seen what 10 marks is and how we can support our children with the tool, let's turn our attention and learn more about a growth mindset. What is it and how does it apply to our discussion today? Before we think about how we can help our children approach math with a growth mindset, let's first hear a little bit about what a growth mindset is. Yes. <laughs> Sit on. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Happy Friday and welcome to Coffee Break. I'm Brenna and I work with Udacity's student community. With me today is Professor Joe Bowler who teaches at Stanford and teaches mathematics education. Um, Joe, can you talk to me about the brain and learning? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, so there's some really important new evidence coming out um, on the brain and learning that all learners should know about. Um, this is recent evidence that's been shocking the scientists that's basically showing that the brain is so incredibly plastic and changeable in ways that they never thought before. So now people are finding that every time somebody learns something, it changes the structure of their brain. Brains are that changeable. And the, one of the best research studies that showed this was a, um, a study that showed during a three-week intervention where people were working on math problems and other problems, um, the structure of their brains changed. That's how fast they can change. So we used to think that there were math people and non-math people, or smart people and people who are less smart. Now we know those labels just don't work because anybody can succeed at the highest levels in math or any subject if they if they are learning and if they have the right sort of materials to learn. So we really need to get rid of those myths about some people being smart and some people not because recent evidence is knocking all of that down. Mm. Um, how does this relate to mindset? So Carol Dweck is a researcher at Stanford. She has decades of very solid research on mindset which shows that people basically fall into one of two categories. They're either fixed mindset or growth mindset and people with a fixed mindset believe that Smartness is really more or less fixed. You can't really change your basic intelligence. And those people um, have a set of behaviors that turns out to be very damaging for them, whereas growth mindset people believe that the, the more work you do, the smarter you get. Mm. And it turns out those two beliefs predict the way people behave and their achievements. So fixed mindset people, if they fail on something, often feel really bad because that tells them they're not smart, they're not a math person. Um, growth mindset people, if they fail on something, think, you know, this is a challenge and they want to go further. So it's very important to have a growth mindset. People who achieve highly in work and life are those with a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. um, and we can, people can change from a fix to a growth mindset. But I think the other super important thing that we've learned is um, that it turns out mistakes are the most important things for learning and that when you make a mistake, your brain grows. And your brain grows in those moments more than it does in other times. So in math, for example, the thing we want people to be doing is making mistakes. When you make a mistake, things happen in your brain that don't happen um, at other times. So it's super important to be making mistakes, and they're very helpful for learning, and I think that's a really important thing to know. Great. Um, how do you think mindset applies to online le learning? Um, so yeah, when you're taking a course online, I think the biggest thing to know about and understand is that you can achieve in this course. And the Udacity courses have everything in them for people to achieve. So having that understanding that you can achieve and that if you struggle on these problems, you're gonna grow your brain and really do well um, is super important to know. And if you make a mistake, get things wrong, instead of thinking, oh, I've hit a wall, this is as far as I can go, to think, this is great, this is when my brain's really growing and I'm gonna go on from this. Hmm. So really important, I think, for people in online courses. Um, if our viewers wanna learn more about mindset, um, where can they go? Yeah, so there's a great website, the Brainology website, which has all lots of mindset um, information and interventions. I'm te te teaching an online course right now at Stanford, which 
Um, it's free and it's about how to learn and also has work on mindset to help people shift from a fixed to a growth mindset. Wonderful. Um, thank you so much for coming. Happy Friday. Happy welcome. coffee break. Happy Friday. Cheers. Cheers. Now we've heard from Joe Bowler a little bit about what it means to have a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, and we've heard about the implications this attitude and set of beliefs has on learning. Take a few moments to think about the following questions and apply everything we've covered today as you think through answers. If you are with someone, we encourage you to pause this video and discuss answers together. Or if you are alone, you can write your answers down. As we wrap up our time together today, here are key ways you can support your child as he or she practices math over the summer. One, use that registration code provided by your child's teacher and create a parent account so you can look up your child's username and password. Two, it's important to remind your child that his or her brain is like a muscle, and the more she exercises her brain, the stronger she will become, and math problems will become easier to solve. Students can exercise by using hints, watching videos, and by reading explanations and trying to figure out where they went wrong. Students can exercise by carefully studying amplifiers when they score a 70% or less on assignments. Remember that if your child needs support with reading, he can always use the text-to-speech icon and show subtitles and videos for language support. Another great tip is to keep your child motivated with goals you can make together. For example, how many hints or videos should we use this week? Or how much time do we need to spend on 10 marks? Last but not least, children can also be motivated by celebrating growth. Together, you can look at scores every week or every two weeks and write them down in a journal. Over time, you will both see your child is improving in math and you can celebrate. Look at reports for any growth and highlight this success. Likewise, remind your child that even if he has a low score now, the practice he is doing is making him stronger in math. And just like a physical workout, sometimes it takes time to see and feel results. Keep up the great work and you will get there. Let's revisit our learning objectives one last time before we finish for today. Take some time to reflect. What is 10 marks? How will you use it with your child this summer? How will you encourage your child to do his or her best? If you're not sure, or if you have more questions, please take the time to review material covered in this session or reach out to us at support at 10 You can also use the following resources. Please reach out to your local school or district with questions about 10 marks in your area, or please reach out to them if you do not have your parent code to register an account. The next link will bring you to a great site with more resources and videos about growth mindset as it pertains to parents and children. You are also always welcome to visit our help desk, where you can find short video tutorials, directions, and a wide variety of resources to help you navigate this summer. Last but not least, we love to hear your questions and feedback. How is it going with your child? Are you stuck? Or are you excited about growth? Tell us, we want to celebrate with you. Please write to us at support at 10 marks.com. Thank you again so much for joining us and have a great summer.